No, it, I just think about what he would look like, what he'd be doing, uh, sports he'd be playing, girlfriends he'd have, <laughs> jobs he'd do. <laughs> I mean, it's just so many things. And I know he would live life to the fullest. Um, he always did. So I just, it's just, it's heartbreaking that he's not here with us, but um, I, I am thankful for the opportunity to talk about him. I really do appreciate you just interviewing me each year. Well, and on, it's on his birthday and, and he meant so much to this community. Your whole family has. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you continue to talk about him and put up pictures. And I mean, he was really a character. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, no, I really can't thank the community enough for all they did through the years as far as like, we were trying to get medicine for him or just the awareness and then after he passed the community came together and we were able to adopt the josh's pantry at the ronald mcdonald house so the community has been a great gift to us and we really appreciate their continued love and support but uh yeah he was so funny i was actually uh reading through memories i had of him yesterday um and uh, one of them was he <laughs> grabbed, a, a, we were in a store and he grabbed a mood ring and he ran up and he put it on his brother Joe's finger and then he started punching him in the stomach as fast as he could and Joe was like, Josh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just trying to see if I can make the ring go black. <laughs> No! Oh, it's great. <laughs> I mean, he just did goofy things like that all the time. And total shock factor with how he would witty and just he always tried to make you laugh. He was just so great. And the, the stories you tell, it, it. I mean, he obviously understood because he was sick that, that he was not like going through what other kids went through yeah i don't know if he really thought of himself as sick and we never really talked about being sick but he had a lot of adult time he had to interact with all sorts of people from doctors and nurses and he just got comfortable just talking to anybody at any time and it just he loved to make he loved to be the source of laughter intentionally not if you he did something embarrassing he would just crawl up but i mean <laughs> he loved to try to find a way to make you laugh he uh, he loves sports. Yes, he did. He did. And actually, this week I posted for his, you know, memory. His kindergarten teacher had told us about uh, she had done a um, March Madness bracket for the first time, and it, he happened to be in her class. And he reviewed it and was like, "Oh, Mrs. Stapleton, what are you doing?" <laughs> She's like, "It was just so knowledgeable. He sounded like he was 20 years old when he was lecturing me." <laughs> yeah, you, there was a there was a great story that you, that you posted the other day with a bat. Oh, yes, yes. So, um, well, our youngest, Jude, um, wanted to, like, start a baseball blog or whatever, and he had reached out to some bat companies, and he reached out to this one in particular um, because when Josh um, was we were trying to get the medicine for Josh. It was amazing the outpouring of love and support in this one particular bat company. Tyrus um, just sent Josh a custom bat. It was engraved with his name, hmm. and and it meant so much because we, we were we are a big baseball family, and it was it was really awesome. And then Jude reached out to this company so I'd like to review your bat and um, I don't know if you remember me and my brother and they sent him the most beautiful bat like it I don't even want him to hit with it it's so beautiful yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was it was just really nice and I, it just was another one of those examples that you know even though Josh isn't with us he's still giving to us you know it was because of that memory and that relationship that it you know it benefited Jude um, and we have moments like that all the time with new people we meet that we met because of our connection with Josh, but yet Josh isn't here. So yeah. I'm just, I always marvel at how he's still just a huge part of our lives. And I mean, of course he's always gonna be a huge part of our lives, but just the impact he still has is just, it's very heartwarming for a mom. Oh, I'm sure all the connections, I mean, I mean you and I are a connection yeah. through him and yeah. just, just, the, and just, nationwide even the, yeah. the, the the people and the experiences that, that you continue to have yeah yeah um and then just like recently with st jude i um i'm becoming a mentor for other families that have gone through what we've gone through so again i'm going to meet other heartwarming families um because of just the experiences i had with josh and it just I love that we can just keep his legacy going with all these different things from St. Jude to Ronald McDonald House to Fairy Godmother, just all 
those things. Really yeah, nice. I was going to say because you you got what you got the, the with with St. Jude and with Ronald McDonald that they were played such a part when when you were were there in, yeah. in Memphis mm -hmm. and it fairy godmother here and there there really have been a lot of organizations that 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 helps you and you've returned done a lot for them yeah no, we um we've definitely been blessed with the different organizations that you know impacted us especially um well all of them i mean i could go on and on about each one and i love to do everything i can for for each one of them so and you and your husband have done is it the half marathon or the, yes, yeah, the, the half the full marathons are past our days. <laughs> we are half people. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have a good time with that because we it just gives an excuse to go back to Memphis and see our friends and enjoy and just enjoy the time we the memories we have there. Because actually, I do feel close to Josh there. That's because that's you know where we last held him. Yeah. So. I I can't. Anytime I see the Memphis Grizzlies on TV. <laughs> I think if you, if you guys spent a lot of time going yes, to games. we did. We were really lucky to be able to go to as many sporting. I mean, he was pretty healthy when we were going to St. Jude, and we became um, great Grizzly fans, uh, Redbird fans for baseball, which led us into St. Louis Cardinals. Like, it just it was really nice. We have a lot of nice memories from sporting events. It's funny because with, 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 with two of your boys at UVA, I, I, I see stuff that you post, and I just think... He'd be wearing he'd be wearing blue and orange yeah. and have the the V saber all over. Him. Yes, he would. He, he well, my sister went to UVA and my dad was a huge fan, and so we followed UVA sports our their whole our my whole life, their whole lives, and it just I know that my dad and him are in heaven cheering because they're there. Yeah, you know, participating the way they do with football and cheerleading. It's it's awesome. I I just think. His whole personality, and like like you described him, and, and just the, the the stories that that you tell about him, I mean, it just that also just endeared him mm -hmm. to the community. All that he was going through, and yet he could be hilarious. He could be so hilarious. Um, actually, one of my um, I appreciate Kevin Henry one day came to do an interview yeah. actually for a Mary Washington commercial, but he just kept going, and they were feeding off each other, and he was so funny like I just um, I love to go back and watch that because it was really his he Kevin pulled every beautiful funny thing out of him he just kept talking and talking it's like 45 minutes long oh wow what a gift though to <laughs> have something is. like that oh it is because it really it happened he did the interview and like less than a month later he ended up having to be intubated and we really never could hear his voice like that again so to be able to uh -huh. have that to uh, go back to actually it was funny one day i went to look at it and kevin had taken it down and i was like kevin <laughs> what have you done <laughs> put it back up and he's like okay 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 i'll never take it down again i promise i promise <laughs> <laughs> well this it the, the the life you've lived well during i mean it, it, for, for you you became such an upfront person i yeah. remember seeing you on national tv and just thinking wow she's from fredericksburg and She's angry, but she's poised. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I had, you know, they just had some advice, you know, just stay calm. <laughs> and um, and it, it worked. And it just, from there, I've, I don't know, I've just gotten comfortable talking about him and talking in general about things that need to be talked about. <laughs> yeah. So, you're, so you've got, you got the Batman shirt. I mean, he was really, in, in, and you've done, done so many of the superhero Yes. Fundraisers. So he was into superheroes along with sports. Yes, he loves superheroes. He loves sports. He loved just like, it's almost like he, with everything that he went through, he would like to put on a different identity. So he was always wearing some kind of jersey or an army um, uniform or superhero costumes. And, um, you know, I think of all the challenges that he overcame and, you know, his attitude through the whole process. He just was our little superhero. And so hmm. I always try to just use that as a way for other people to say, hey, I remember Josh, you know, I'm going to wear a superhero shirt or some cape or mask or something on his birthday or the anniversary of his passing and when they post those pictures it just it means so much to me and I save every one of them so my time hop is like so <laughs> full of superheroes <laughs> well I'm sure I mean I when when um all through all through high school and when I've seen your when I've seen your boys on the, the football field at JM I always just think you know 
he should be there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure as you sit at those those, those games, mm -hmm. and you're such a tight family. Yeah. No, it's actually kind of neat. He had a little friend um, from first grade who, every time he sees me, has hugs me. His name is um, Dustin Davis, and he would text me and say, hey, we have a game tonight. Why don't you come? And he would invite me, and it was really nice because I knew Josh and him would be playing together. And it was, it's really nice. I mean, he's just such a great kid. And that's that's the thing. Just uh, it, it, you and others have have really been have been examples to me about not forgetting yeah. birthdays, and that and that in so so many families do want to talk and not and not forget. Yeah, I think I was thinking about that as we were planning to get together. Like, um, you know, no grief is the same. Everybody does it yeah. a little bit different. But I have found a consistent vein um, when a parent has lost a child, whether they're eighty and the child was sixty. It's the wrong order of things and you know you just feel like their their legacy their future was just cut way too short too soon and to have the opportunity to just talk about them hear stories gosh the greatest gift is when someone sends me a picture that i didn't have of josh which still happens randomly and i just i I'll call him cry like oh my gosh i have this picture yeah. thank you so much like i just i do i love to talk about him love to see pictures i love to hear stories uh, even if i've heard the story a thousand times i i just love it and um i don't know it just helps me warms my soul and helps me feel at peace for our loss yeah well my favorite story is the one when he was raising money <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite story <laughs> yeah no he was raising money for saint jude um during the mathathon at hugh mercer and um his brothers, while he was in treatment, had done really well together. They had raised like $5,000 and he so badly wanted to beat him. And he was lamenting to Mrs. Mann at, at lunch and was like, uh, oh, I don't have anybody else to ask. She's like, well, Josh, you can ask me. So he got all excited and asked her and she's reached in her pocket and she handed him $20. And he was like, Mrs. Mann, you can do better than that. <laughs> and it was just so funny because she called me and told me the story and told me to tell that he she was putting the envelope with a bigger amount in the uh his envelope tomorrow so to hold on but she was going to do better because he challenged her <laughs> well amy thank you just because i mean friday's his 17th birthday which just doesn't doesn't seem possible yeah. but um the, the, the stories you tell I mean, he 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 continues, and, and, and especially people who know him. I mean, and I know they all hear stories too. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really again appreciate the opportunity to talk about him and just keep his legacy going. And thank you to everyone that watch watches this interview. I really appreciate that you've heard Josh's name today. And if people want to, they can still there's they yes. can still give several different ways. Yes. Um, well, right now for his birth month, I always um, support Josh's pantry at the Ronald McDonald House. And um, I think the link will be in the comments mm -hmm. <laughs> and you yeah. can touch on that and um, just help us support that great organization. Um, when you have to leave home and live in a city that you're not familiar with and just they just take care of every detail. You have a place to live, food to eat, transportation. It's, it's a huge relief, comfort when you get to stay at the Ronald McDonald House while you're in treatment. Okay. Did you cover everything you wanted I think, to? Yeah. I, that was just, I really never planned for